Hey guys, what's up? Another video here. I'm gonna play a game on chess.com. So I'm playing Friel from Canada. He's rated 1864, so he plays d4. He's gonna play knight f6. So uh, we're lagging a bit here. Uh, he plays c4. We're gonna try to work around that. So okay, g. So let's go with the king's India. I'm in the mood for a king's India. Let's see what happens. Bishop g7. So is he going to go for the main lines? He does. e4. Okay. Castle. Bishop e2. Yeah, and we're going to go for my pet line here. Bishop g4. It's not the main way, but I, I really like this move. It's um, So the idea now is to fight for the d4 square. I go knight f to d7 now. Now I want to go knight c6 and e5 and pr put pressure on this... Um, d4 square. So bishop e3, that's normal. Now knight c6. Now if d5, there's very interesting lines where you actually give up two... Ah, interesting. So he goes queen d2. So I don't think... I don't think that's um, one of the main moves here. Because now that gives me a chance to play e5. Now the point is, if he plays d5, which is the normal response, I take an f3 to side because uh, his knight was controlling the d4 square and now I jump into d4 that's the key and uh, yeah knight b5 is a good move it's a very good move in this position uh, no actually in this position it's not a good move I don't because I take an f3 and mess up his pawn structure usually his queen is on d1 when he does this idea and the point is if I play knight takes b5 play cb he has double pawns but now he has a lot of pressure on the c file he goes Rook c1, queen c2. So here I don't see a reason why not to take his bishop and mess up his pawn structure. Uh, so, okay, he's going to go here. And now, um, first of all, uh, first of all, let's give, chase his knight away. Because I want to move my queen and I don't want c7 to hang. So let's do that after knight c3. Now I like this move. Actually, we got to watch out for queen h4. Because bishop g5, but then I guess just queen h5, so that's not a problem. Let's do this. Queen h4, bishop g5, queen h5, attacking the f3 square. So he does that. Interesting. King g2. So I'm thinking f5 now. I don't see any reason not to go f5 and start opening up some lines. Let's go f5. Let's go f5 and see what he does. Yeah, bishop g5, so we're going to go as expected, uh, queen h5. Playing very quick and confidently here but I'm not that big of a fan of what he's doing I think black is better here a lot better actually because he just has this bad structure his king is open and I don't see what compensation he has for that he has a space advantage but we've traded a lot of pieces and I don't think it's a big deal at all now the question is what to take with there are some benefits to taking with the rook because the rook's very active here and it, it's with a tempo the only thing I don't like about it is he gets this e4 square for his knight. He gets this blockade. That's why I'm I'm really not sure. There is an argument could be made for both captures. You know what, though? I think the dynamics I get, though, is more important than the, than the e4 square. Because now I'm also attacking f3. It's a double attack. Now I'm attacking his bishop and queen takes f3. I'm not really sure how he deals with it. Queen, interesting. Queen e3, doesn't that just hang a piece? I think it does. Let's just take take the bishop. Looks like a free bishop to me. We just got to play faster now. Oh, so he just resigns. Okay. So, yeah, that was an interesting game. Uh, uh, that was an interesting game. His idea, knight b5, that's a standard idea, but it's without queen d2 because queen d2 allowed me to take an f3, double up his pawns, and uh, black was just better here, and the game just proved it. Uh, it was just very unpleasant for white to play. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. Bye.